All right, so in this video, we're going to compare and contrast the washer method of finding volumes of solids of revolution versus the cylindrical shell method. Okay, so this is just conceptually now, how do they differ? And then we'll talk about a specific example where uh, the washer method is maybe a little bit more complicated than the shell method, so why you might want to choose one over the other. So let's just take a look at this. We have uh, the y-axis here, x-axis over here. We have this function y equals 1 minus root x. Uh, that's the upper kind of limit to this r green shaded area. And the question would be, okay, so this diagram right here would represent a question. What would be the volume of the solid of revolution when we revolve this shaded area r around this line uh, x equals negative 1 quarter or the vertical line x equals negative 1 quarter. And so what you'd get, right, is you would get, this would be the line x equals negative 1 quarter. Here would be the y-axis. Are you seeing it here? There's the y-axis. And this would be the x-axis here. Okay, so washer method. Let's take a look at the washer method. We're trying to find this volume um, of solid of revolution. The washer method would say, let's try and find the area of this larger washer that would sort of be on the the base right of this volume of this solid so this would be sort of washer number one you see that that's washer number one and to find that that area right we would take um, sort of the area of the entire circle like the disk and then we'd subtract the area of the hollow part in the middle right because this part right here would represent, be represented by this right here, the hollow part in the middle. So, and then what we would do is we would um, basically find the other washers. So in red would be a, another washer that would be smaller, quite a bit smaller, because it's up a little bit higher. You see that? And we would stack all of those washers up until we got to the, the very top, and we would have this little washer that's barely thick at all, right? It, it's... The, the difference between the, you know, this part of the function and then this y-axis line, it gets really small. So the, the radius of the washer would be very small. Here it would be about that big, and then down at the bottom would be a bigger. So to do the washer method, fine. We just stack the washers up on top of each other until that fills the entire volume, right? Um, of course, we're rotating around the y-axis, and the thickness uh, of the washers, so I'm going to exaggerate this, but the thickness of the washer right here, that one of the washers that we would stack, would be um, in the vertical position. So this would be d, dy, I guess, right? And so that's how we know that we would want to have an integral with uh, you know, dy. So that's the washer method, and we've done this one before. Now, the cylindrical shell method takes uh, just a little bit of a different look at this, okay? So I like this example because we already are seeing, um, we're already seeing a cylindrical shell in the middle, okay? So let's just say we have a radius right here, and then this is the top of this shell. You see that shell? So it's a cylinder, you see that? Okay. So we have a radius which would extend from this line of rotation right here out to, to to this point and then another radius which would be out here and a radius out here and it depends on the x value so just to to envision this though um, the next washer not washer sorry but the next cylindrical shell let's say would be down here and it would be a little bit wider do you see how that's a little bit wider and this cylindrical shell would come down to the same base but it would be a little bit wider and so if we took the, um, the area of the cylindrical shell, and then we had another cylindrical shell that was a little bit wider, but a little bit shorter, and we, st we basically stack them one inside of the other, or, or keep stacking them outside, then we get cylindrical shells, and I'll just draw a couple more here. We get cylindrical shells that start to look like this. So there's one there, it goes behind there. And then this one is about this wide, you see that? And if you stack all these together, these cylindrical shells get super um, short, but very wide. Okay? So 
again, a little bit tough for me to draw exactly, but here we, we have a very wide but short cylindrical shell. So if you can find the surface area of those shells and have those all stacked, that's another way to add up to the volume of that. Okay, so we have washers or discs, or in this case washers because there's a hole in the middle, and those are, they're stacked up, big ones stacked all the way up to little one up top. Or we have a long slender uh, cylindrical shell, and then it, they're stacked with other ones that get shorter but a lot wider. Everyone see that? That's the difference between the two methods. And one is, again, taking the area, uh, a large area minus a small area to find the area of the washer. And we're integrating that from a lower uh, limit of integration to an upper limit of integration. And we're basically adding all those together with small differentials of x. Uh, in this case, okay, so in this case with the cylindrical shell method, things get changed a little bit. So take a look at this. The radius, as I mentioned earlier, is this part. So now if we're going uh, left and right, the radius would be some form of x. Okay? So the radius would be some form of x. And x would be right here. That would be x distance. And because this particular example is rotating around this, the radius is actually from here all the way out to here. And so that's x and that's plus another space of one quarter. So in this case, and we'll get into specific examples later, the radius is actually x plus one quarter here. But the, the point I'm trying to make is we have x uh, here is our radius. And in order to find the um, surface area of a cylinder, right, we would go 2 pi r times h. That would be the surface area of the cylinder along the outside there, right? And so R, we said, was X. What is H? H is going to be the height. That means from the base right here up to what? The function, right? And so the height is going to basically be the function. Okay, that's going to be the height. And that height is going to change as we move out. It's going to get smaller and smaller and smaller. And that's because the y values get smaller and smaller and smaller for the function. Okay? Is it starting to make sense? So we've got 2 pi and we've got uh, x here. So, and we've got the height is going to be y in terms of x. Okay? And then if you think about the, um, the, th the thickness of this shell, it's going to be ever so thick here, just really basically a thickness like this that's going to be, you know, on the edges, right? It's going to be thick just like that, just a little bit, and that's going to be dx, okay? So this one is integral, blah, 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 dy, the washer method, right? Because we're rotating around this way, around the y-axis or a vertical sort of y-like axis. This one's going to be integral, um, and it's going to be uh, dx then. Okay, because the radius is in x, the little the thickness of the shell is in x. Okay, so that's the that's the basic difference between the washer method and the shell method. And hopefully, you can kind of see that, and we're going to do an example here, um, uh, and I'm going to show you how the cylindrical shell method would be much quicker, much easier than the washer method.